Okay, welcome back. I hope you had a good break. We're gonna dive in and keep painting this out a little bit. First thing I'm going to do, just because I walked back in, I decided that it really just needed to lighten up that water a little bit. Got a little bit dark in spots. So I'm just gonna go in and lighten that up. Feels better, brighter, cool. Um, the other thing I can do that will help a little bit is I wanna take this area of the sand and I'm gonna just take some straight white and throw it in here to just punch up that sort of glow that you get because the area that we're standing in is going to be like a grove, if you will. And you're in shadow. And what I want to do is get the idea that I'm looking out and I'm, and the, the light is bouncing off the sand. Right out there. That's what that feels like. I can buy that. Cool. All right, so let's uh, let's talk about the rocks a little bit. Now, rocks are best done when they are thought of in very simple terms of movement. So, simple, bold movements. Um, pick a color for the top, pick a color for one side, pick a color for the other side, um, and and stay and stay consistent with it. Um, in this case, we're going to end up throwing. Um, straight up sunlight dappled on these rocks but for the most part they're in shade okay and um, the top of the rocks would be reflecting the, the sky color so I'm actually just gonna take some of the straight sky color that I've got and I'm gonna figure out where my tops are like I'm pretty sure there's one right here There's another one out here. Um, I think. And why would you put this color in before you put the tree in? Because the tree is closer, in theory. Or further away, really it doesn't matter. You could do either one next. Um, for me, the rocks are just big blobs of no definition, and I'm going to feel better because that once I put in the tree, it's going to get real busy real fast. Real busy, right? Because there's a lot of leaves, there's a lot of movement, and I really just want um, this next bit to be a little more balanced visually, because otherwise I might, I might get the leaves wrong. I don't want to get the leaves wrong. I like the leaves. I'm excited about that. That's a general principle of back to front, right? Yep, exactly. So, um, but as I was mentioning, whether or not the um, tree is closer to us or not, um, it's also a sense of how busy it's going to be. But in this case, tree is probably closer to us. Um, we'll see that in a moment. If you haven't looked in your, uh, course materials, we have a, we have a, included the original, the original photograph that this is based on. What's interesting about it is that we have, we have obviously dramatically altered, uh, our composition to make it just something prettier. Um, and we do that all the time. If you watch our cityscape video, that's, um, uh, how-to video. That one is dramatically different. Because the original is cool, 
But um, you can see way too much of the building and I really wanted to make that just a little bit more impressionist and leave more up to the imagination of the, of the viewer. Let's hold there for a minute. So now I'm thinking that the sun's probably coming from, I mean, to me, it's actually straight over our heads, but I'm gonna give it a little bit of an angle. I'm gonna pick the sun's coming in from the left, which means that there's gonna be a warmer color coming in this way on the rocks, cooler color coming in on this way on the rocks. Warm versus cool is relative, okay? So it doesn't necessarily need to be, um, super duper warm um, like it doesn't need to be gold or anything it can be um, if I'm went directly in the sunlight it might be but in this case let's see if this does anything no that's actually a little bit cooler all right but that's a great cool color maybe I'll keep that just for that reason That's just some straight Prussian blue, which it looks like we need to reload. Again, we don't really need to do a lot of detail on these rocks. They're in the shade for the most part. Um, we can if we want to, but you're probably gonna end up blocking out most of it anyway. So maybe for a warm color for the side of the rocks, I might mix together some greens. Let's see if that does anything. Oh, that's nice. Thank you. Go back in with a little bit more of this and rough that out a little. Honestly, I think the rocks are looking pretty good. I'm going to darken in that bit. Cool. So now, I think just for the sake of keeping things loose and a little bit fun, let's go ahead and, and uh, throw in some tree branches. Um, so for this, I'm gonna look at my research. I'm gonna go, let's see, there's one that kind of comes out this way. You'll notice, like, it's it's eating right through some of that other paint, but it's not clean and even. Um, there's some breakups. That's okay for now. Don't worry about it. Um, we can, we're can. we always going to come back in later and, and do some more anyway. Well, it says not change knives. Nope. 
I have not in this case um, because this one I'm, I'm playing in some pretty thick branches um, if they were smaller branches, I might go to my detail knife, but for now, laying in some of these big guys, yeah, I just, I just really want something a little more sturdy. Um, yeah, just for the sake of whatever. Down there. Maybe we'll do just like that. Okay, cool. Now I'm gonna want to put like a just a little bit of highlight on there. Doesn't necessarily have to be on the whole thing, but we'll just. And remember, a lot of this is gonna get covered by leaves. And just to show you, that's the amount that I'm putting on the palette knife, not all that much. And I'm just sort of dragging one edge, or just the tip, and it's a highlight, which means um, it's gonna be picked up, cast by the sun, so it's on the top of the branches, not the bottom. Now, what you can do if you're if you're feeling particularly fancy is you can go ahead and, and put in like a, a lighter sh uh, shadow color, like a blue or something, along the bottom. If you want to just be a little on the fancy side, but don't go too crazy. Keep it simple. It's gonna be so much detail on, on top of this that God knows what's gonna be left. Cool, we got some branches there. Okay, so here's where we're gonna have a little bit of fun. We, um, we now need to make a bunch of essentially circular um, leaves that go over, on, over all of this. Um, and there's a lot of different ways to do it. There's like, there's, half moon palette knives out there. There's um, like these jewelry making um, bits that we have that are just plastic. You can also make uh, these circular shapes out of this palette knife or even out of like this palette knife or whatever. What, what I'm gonna do next really is just show you a couple of different ways to make some leaf shapes. And that's all we're doing. So first thing I'm gonna do, grab some yellow, some sap green, Mix that on together. Need a little bit more of this. Cool. And I'm gonna just, actually let me start over here. I'm gonna just take this and be like. Cool. And I want that to be a little bit darker, so I'm gonna throw some phthalo in there. So what I'm doing, if you'll notice, take my knife, load it up with some paint, put it down, and then just spin it. It's not a perfect circle. Funny thing about leaves, usually they aren't either. So it works out just fine. <laughs> so that's one way to do it, and that's with, that's with this palette knife. Okay, that's one way to do it. I'm gonna clean that off, and we'll try something a little different. We'll take, we'll take this guy. And I'm gonna grab a little bit more of this and put it on there. And this guy, I'll do it over here just so you can see the difference. That's cool. Like that's really cool. So what I'm doing is I'm loading it up with some paint just on the tip like that, right? And then I am putting it, I'm gonna put it down tip first and then press down a little bit, spin, pull it up. And all of a sudden I've got leaves. 
That's really, really cool. I love that one. Okay, so let's say you don't have, let's say you don't have either of those though. But you do have like this square guy, right? Okay, cool. Spin the other way. Down, spin. That one actually looks right the way it is. Don't even need to go the other way. That's really, really good. Cool. So that works nice too. Um, it, it, this sort of depends on what is what, which, whichever shape you like best. Um, I think they're all kind of cool. So maybe we'll do this one um, using all of them just to keep it mixed up a little bit, and you can watch us. Um, changing up our techniques as we go. Um, I will I will try and remember as I am as I am working to say, hey, I'm using this one now. Hey, I'm using this one now. Um, I might forget. Uh, if you're not sure, have a good look at the video. I'm sure you'll be able to tell. Okay. So thinking compositionally a little bit, I know that again I wanna I want to pull my focus more toward the center. So I'm going to have the darker, these edges out here to be darker. That's going to be almost entirely phthalo green. And let's mix a little bit of Viridian in with it. Let's do that. Cool. And then I'm going to go... Uh, cool. You may be thinking to yourself right now, oh my god, he's using so much paint. Oh my god, what are you going to do? Well, we're just going to keep using a lot of paint. Um, one of the things that's really cool about this is that you are using a lot of paint and it's got real physical depth to it. You'll also notice that that one, it's not perfect at all. It's alright, neither is nature. It's cool. Just keep going. get some bigger ones in there though. Much bigger ones. So let's get out here and think like Sure, why not? And, uh... Oh that's cool. Yeah okay. I dig that. up a little bit. Okay, so that's a, that's a lot of big ones. Let's switch it up. Uh, I'm going to switch back to this guy, which was the second one that I showed you before. Go over here and go. So now, so you just, yeah. before you go over there, you also, with those last two leaves, added a lot of yellow into your green. Uh huh. I did, absolutely. Yeah. So, can you talk a little bit about blending colors with your palette knife? So, um, as you will notice, I will, when I'm doing something like this, something like leaves, where I really I want the cool striations to sort of happen naturally. I'll just grab some of the paint, just like so. I'll grab another color that's similar, green, and maybe a third one if I want to. Put it down, mix it up a little bit, then grab it. As you can see on the knife, it's got three colors mixed in right there. That's really cool. And then when I put it down and I do that, Like that's neat. That's really, really cool. And you'll notice in nature, you know, the way leaves grow and, and, and 
they some parts are in the sun some parts are in the shade whatever um, this is just allowing you to create some of the random random beauty of nature without driving yourself nuts um, and this is just a great way to do it does that make sense I mean you can't talk back I mean you could you could probably tell me it does or it doesn't but um, I'd love to know you equate that to what a brush, brush, how you would do that with a brush? Well, I mean, if I'm, I'm thinking about a brush, I guess I would mix up several colors on a palette, but not mix them so thoroughly that either color disappears into the made color. I would make sure that there are lots of, there's lots of variation in color still built into it. Um, so that when, you know, you're mixing them around on the palette, I don't know if you can see this green right here, but there's still lots of yellow in it, and there's still lots of light green in it, and dark green. And then you just put it on the brush and you pull it. Um, you don't want it to be thoroughly mixed. One of the things about this technique um, that I love, that I truly love, is that um, it's 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 the random beauty of nature that you're allowing to happen without too much work. Like, like that's just so cool. I think anyway. And I've got some bits over here in the end that I don't necessarily need to have a lot of color or variation in. So I'm just gonna You mean did that answer your question? Mm-hmm. Okay. Essentially it's the palette knife is far more random than brushwork. Absolutely. Especially well, in this case it is. I mean I see people work very cleanly on, on, on palette knives. Um, Absolutely. I when don't. It comes to, um, when it comes to blending colors, mm -hmm. palette knife is far more random. Yeah, absolutely. This particular technique and what you are, how you are approaching it and teaching it. Yeah, and I mean, I, I like that. I really like how, with this technique, I don't necessarily know exactly what the color mix is going to be. I have an idea, um, but I don't know exactly how it's gonna go. And that's where the magic lies. Um, and I figured that out by accident working on another painting. Uh, actually here, like two years, a year ago. A year ago? Two years ago. A yeah. year ago. And you can most certainly be more specific. Absolutely. But that's not necessarily what we are. Like I'm being a little more specific in making some of these darker leaves right now. Um, but I'm not really, I, I'm not super focused on. It's not the approach we're teaching at the moment. Yeah, at all. Which is what I was asking and okay. pointing out. Okay. Cool. Um, this part can be a little time consuming just because it's, uh, it's dropping in a whole lot of leaves. But that's okay. It's worth it. A lot of artists out there that like to automate um, as much of this part of the process as possible. In other words, they uh, try and just do large swaths of the painting without having to do individual bits or anything. Um, I know an artist who, like when he paints his grass, he never paints individual blades of grass, ever. Um, and it's cool, but the, the older I have gotten, the more I really, really appreciate as an artist painting those individual bits of grass over large swaths of automated uh, grass. So 
with like taking a fan brush and painting in you know a large section of grass, but then going back in on top of it and doing individual bits um, to make those pop. I think that's really cool. All right, so next step. Let's go ahead and put some of the branches back in. Got my all-purpose palette knife here. And I'm just gonna put some burnt umber on it. And I'm going to bring back a couple of sections of it. And I'm also gonna add a few. Like I've got a branch here that I really Even switched up like if you don't want to use the, just the straight burn number you can grab some like raw sienna or something but anything just to help bring back some of that some of that branch work Tracing over it to help them pop a little bit. Now, next thing I'm gonna do, create some some dangling vineage just off of, sort of off the whole thing. And the way I do that is I put the paint on there and I just sort of pull it down. Um, and remember, it's, a lot of this grows in clumps, so there we go. And I'm just using. Uh, burnt Umber start. And this one's gonna hang from this tree. Let's get another one there, another one there. And I'm just lightly dragging it through the paint. I'm not like pressing and dragging. Um, like you'll see me doing a lot of my uh, cityscape stuff. I'm not. down just there we go that's nice Noticed I just left like a big open space there in the middle. Just close that. Okay, so I've got this hanging vines there. Let's go ahead and throw a little bit of highlight on them. Same thing. Get it on the edge and just drag it along the line. Just drag it. Super light. And as soon as you start seeing it sort of stop being 
um, that highlight color and it's just becoming a blend of everything else. Go ahead and wipe it off. Add a little bit more. Branches just to as they would be. Something dark. Pretty good. Cool. All right, let's do, uh, let's do a little bit more before we take a break. Um, next step, what we're gonna do is throw in some, uh, just a little bit of light dappled on the rocks. So this can this can get real tricky. Um, I advise you just to keep it as simple as you possibly can and uh, don't overthink it. This is a real, real simple thing. I'm gonna mix up a couple of colors here. Um, what colors? I am mixing up just another light, light green, and then like a, a warm sand, or a, like a, uh, a light, very sandy gold or something. What paint colors are you using? Oh, sorry about that. Okay. Um, as you can tell in this case, this is kind of what I have on, what I've mixed up on the palette. So I've got titanium white and this is sort of that um, phthalo green plus yellow. Um, to be honest with you, being super specific about what colors I'm using, um, I, I, a lot of this is uh, sort of made up as you go along and you just sort of pick colors that feel pleasing to the human eye, if you will. Okay, so we wanna think about light coming through the trees, dappling on these rocks. And the way we start is that, let's imagine light comes down and hits that. And then it's also going to hit the top of this rock there. I'm just dragging paint through. Okay, cool. Not bad so far. Um, and then maybe another one here. Clean it off. And then we're gonna do maybe something that sort of pulls down along that edge. Nice. And maybe another one here. And another one down here. And remember, if you've seen any, if you know anything about me so far, you know I'm gonna cover most of this up. So. If you hear that noise, it's one of our studio cats attempting to sneak into the studio. Very excited to be okay. Okay, it's a good start. So now, I'm gonna take some of this uh, sienna, a bunch of white. Check that out. 
feet under the door. Um, okay. Then, so this is another sun color. You just want more than one, and they can mix a little bit. It's cool. It's not looking right yet, that's okay, because we're not done. We're just sort of getting this pit started. We should probably have something back in here. Something up here. Okay, that's, that's definitely more than enough. So now that it's on there, what we need to do is imagine that there are twigs and other debris in the air over our heads that are gonna break up and cause shadows on top of all of this. So the way I'm gonna do that is I take, just to start, this is a light blue, very similar to the white blue I've got on the rocks, which is Prussian and white. Break it up. This is step one, by the way. There's gonna be a lot more. Well, a lot more, like one. straight of the straight Prussian or some of the darker bits like over here and I'm just gonna like there's a twig running between there and then there's another one there and then maybe oh there's another one over there and like that I have to sort of make it up in my head um, what's happening over my head and if you're not sure what shadows should look like like shadows of leaves and twigs just look at your research um, or go dig up, you know, some easy shadows of twigs and leaves on the ground in a forest. The, um, my, my personal feeling on this is that the best way to do it is to not think about it too much. Just do it. Just throw some paint on that knife, like so, and just sort of drag.
starts to blend a little bit, that's all right. It's okay. It's nature. Nature, nature breaks up in weird ways. It's totally okay. need to you can always go back and be like I want that bit like some of these leaves pop up a little bit or some of that light popped up a little bit you can always go back just make sure that your palette knife is bold and strong and you are not dragging too much just make choices um, and even if they're just quick choices you know that I know that this area over here doesn't look like it's got enough light on it okay boom 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 done. Uh, I want a little more shadow in here. All right, fine. Boom, 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 boom. Done. You know, don't, don't delay. Don't, don't fret too much about it. Um, cause it'll show people will know that you're like, don't know what you should, what it should look like. <clears throat> okay, cool. That's a good start for that. The last thing I want to do before we take another break is I want to go ahead and get some, uh, shadows in on the ground on the beach for um, all of this. So what I want to do is start by making a lighter there we go. A lighter sh lighter brown shadow color. So we've got sort of this lighter color and now I'm gonna just come out here and make random shadowy trails. And it's not going to be even or anything. All I wanna do is get in the idea that there's some kind of shadow being created from all this foliage up here on the ground. Then I'm gonna take something a little bit darker and do the same thing a little bit closer. Sienna. And I'm really just dragging that around. I'm, I'm barely putting it on the canvas and moving it. So is it just a really light viscosity? Is that how it's not mixing? Uh, I'm barely touching the canvas Got is it. how it's happening. I am barely touching it. And then if you want to be fun, you can go ahead, put a little bit of this lighter on there, and maybe just throw in. Is that your original sand color? No, this is the darker shadow color. Gotcha. Maybe just put in some light. 
things in here that indicate that somebody walked through and went around that corner. Little footsteps in the sand. Um, okay, so cool. This is a good place for us to pause and start to think about what we're going to do next to plus it up. Um, but all the pieces are there right now. Um, the next step is going to be chiseling out the rocks a little bit more, maybe playing with the water just a little bit more, filling in some of the foliage or adding foliage or even taking away foliage if we need to. But that's what we're going to do. You are very close to being done with this bad boy. And it's looking pretty good. All right, nice work, thanks for hanging out, and we will see you guys in a little bit. Bye.